yes friends and welcome back to another video on chess mastermind so in this video we are going to see all the tips tricks and traps in the england's gambit so by wasting no time let's move on to the video now this movement starts with b4 then e5 and then white takes this gambit is not played often by black and i do not tell you to play this without analyzing because this gambit is like you can't make mistakes okay so and also why i recommend you to play is because if it is not played off and it means that the white player has less experience of playing it so this is going to be a good game for you now after white takes on e5 we are going to move to c6 white defends e7 and now white defends again now we have a good move queen to b4 it forks the king and the bishop so the two logical replies here are queen to d2 and bishop to d2 so once we are going to see d2 from the queen and then we will see bishop to d2 after we move queen to d2 this is going to be a disaster for white because when we take now what you will do you can't stop black from taking this rook right so you have to give something special to him something special what is something special here something special is a queen tray now he's damaged he's gone he is like what a mistake did i do now this sweetie is gone and also this rook is under pressure and from here it is going to be like i'm going to win this man so this is a very attacking opening wait talking about attacking openings there is another opening named the mortimer trap and the legal trap i have made videos on those and i would like you to see those and use them in your chess tournaments so here we saw what queen d2 leads to now let's see what bishop d2 leads to when bishop d2 is played we again take on b2 now if the bishop comes to c3 then we have this move of bishop to b4 and after this move is white takes then we take back with our knight and now we are double attacking on the pawn on c2 and also if our knight manages to reach to c2 it is going to fork the king and also the rook so this is going to be a uh, really nice right now let's see if after this move when we move to b4 what if queen comes to d2 here what we can do is that if queen comes to d2 we can take on c3 with our bishop after we take on c3 queen takes on c3 wait is this queen takes on c3 okay no you are gone man a checkmate wow from where did this come from yes a really nice move right okay now here after queen to d2 after bishop takes on c3 then if we take with the knight it is not going to be good okay so go for the bishop only now we saw how black can do it why can't black sorry why can't white 
Why can't white do this? If the white has analyzed it, he can do it. We are going to flip the board now. After we flip it, we are going to go back and from this position. Bishop to d2, queen takes on b2. Now the most played move is c3. But the best move is knight to c3. Okay, knight to c3. Bishop comes to d4 and our rook now attacks on b1. What it does means what the knight movement is that before we couldn't attack the queen and the queen got a very strong square to settle. But now it hasn't. So queen retreats to a3. Now from this move we go knight to d5. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant from white. Attacking the knight from three different pieces and also threatening a fork on the next move. Right? Really nice. Now after d5, bishop takes on d2. Okay, bishop has taken on d2. We take it, no problem. And now the king comes to d8. This move. Now the king can't castle. And also what it does is that it opens up some nasty checks like this. Why was this move played? To prevent the, this move. So that the king was not fogged with the rook. Now, from here, what we are going to do is we are going to check. Now, just look at this position. King moves. Bang. All over. And uh, wherever the queen, the, the king goes, the rook has to. So, this is going to be really nasty for black. And from this position with our queen being on such a nice square, we can get our knight back to the play again. We have this knight to attack it. And once we move our pawn on e2, we can attack with this bishop on this diagonal. We can also go attacking on the king side like this. So a lot of attacking options for white. Now let's look that what if black is a little bit smart. What if he moves to a5 with his bishop. Then we move rook to b5. Again being aggressive. Now if white takes it moves to the same line which i showed before so now white is moving to b6 here we take it because now no matter how black takes the rook we are going to simply damage like this and once the queen takes it just look at this position here. Yeah? This is so good. This is like, whoa, 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 whoa. Your bishop's developed, your knight is developed, your queen is going to be developed, your king is safe like anything. You're going to bring your rook into the play in a very few moves. You can castle your king if you want. Okay. What can white do now? We are ahead in development. We have an extra pawn dancing on e5. Our king is very much safer. And the black king is like, I can't do anything. I'm in the center. It can't castle as well. So this is a very nice opening, right? And it works for both white and black. But remember to analyze this opening twice, thrice before playing this in the tournaments. I would like you to play it in the tournaments and comment in the section below and tell me that did you do well with this opening or you are like no it was okay okay types so that I can plan my future content that 
how I can help you in winning and increase your rating in chess. And yes, if you are watching the video till now, till the end, please show your support by liking this video and share it as much as possible. So this was the trap which I wanted to show to all of you and thank you for watching till the end and we are going to meet in the next video. That's it. Thank you.